Date, February 22nd, 2017. Format, Popper. Join me, Numathanami, as we delve into the world of broken commons and silly interactions. Yes, that's right, it is Popper time. I am going to play an old affinity list that uh, I used to play back, well, when I played Popper more frequently. This has access to four of each of the lovely artifact lands, the ones that are banned in basically every other format imaginable. Things like Thoughtcast. This deck is pretty sweet. I'm going to take it for a Popper League run, and uh, you guys are all invited to watch. So let's jump to the first match. All right, the first match of five of this Popper League. We are on the play because we won the die roll. And yeah, we have a decent hand. This is going to be a turn one artifact, turn two Carapace Forger. Now, I didn't mention during the deck tech of the video, but this deck wins very quickly with a Tog uh, plus Fling or Team or Battle Rage. So watch for some sick, nasty combos here. We're going to definitely keep this hand. All right. Lead with Island, Chromatic Sphere. Pretty nice turn two. We get to go Carapace Forger, which is automatically going to be a 4-4 four four since we have Metalcraft. I'm sure a lot of these cards people will recognize, of course, but some are going to be lesser known. We'll see what the uh, opponent's running. All right. Anyways, these spheres let you cycle into your more important spells. You always want to draw thought casts, especially. But uh, this deck is very capable of just dumping its hand by turn two. Frogmites, Mirror Enforcers, etc. <clears throat> Island, all right, and a Preordain. So that, that means our opponent can be on many, many decks. I'm not going to try to guess immediately. Um, there's like a blue Delver deck, there's you know, Grixis, there's Blue Black Control, there's plenty of other things. It could be Blue Red, Kiln Fiend, lots of, lots of potentials. We're just going to go with our own game plan here, though. Turn 2, 4-4, four, four, and uh, go for an Atog next turn. Galvanic Blast, always a good one. And it looks like we're going to be playing against the Blue Black Control deck, which is not a very good matchup for us. I need to draw, like, Flare Husks and whatnot. And that is a good start. Uh, the reason I want to draw Flare Husks... The Edict Effects. This way I get to protect one of my more important creatures from an Edict. Although a Tog is one that gets um, either... Ugh. Well, can't beat a dead weight there. I was going to say, uh, a Tog cannot beat a um, Doom Blade or otherwise. Alright, so we're going to need to cycle into some, so, into some stuff here. Thought Casts are generally the way that you get back into this game, but I can start chaining these Chromatic Spheres looking for other important spells. If I had like had turn one flare husk into turn two carapace forger, we would have been so much better off. Alright, so let's cycle this for a red. Another land is not what we're looking for. Let's cycle this for a green. Oh, well. I guess we are just doomed to lose. Again, of course you can flood out in any format, but uh it is especially punishing to flood out when you're playing the affinity deck because you need so few lands to actually function. And at this point of the game, we really just need to draw thought casts. I'm going to go ahead and Galvanic Blast away the, the Seagate Oracle here just to get rid of a blocker. But at this point, I'm giving our chances of winning this game already a low 20%. All right, Mirror Enforcer is not a terrible draw, of course. It's a 1 mana 4-4 four, four in this situation, but... They have things like Ghastly Demise, Doom Blade. Very many ways to uh, to deal with the Mirror Enforcer. Again, I'm a little bit protected because I have the Germ, which means any more Edict effects uh, are going to be a little bit neutered, but we'll have to see what we can come up with here. And there's the Doom Blade we were talking about. Spring Leaf Drum, not the card, again, we were looking for. Go ahead and just run out my hand. We've drawn six lands this game, which is basically a flood. More lands in the control deck. I don't remember if that. I think uh, the opponent's deck wins via 
Curse of the Bloody Tome. And again, lots of lands. Nothing going on here. Uh, we have a lot of good sideboard cards to bring in. We have like Relic, Relic of Progenitus. We have um, Pyroblasts for any of their blue cards that we have to ca counter like Moldrifter, which is their play here. I believe some of their lists run like Ghostly Flicker just to get some value off of their creatures as well. All right, Prophetic Prism Cycle. Okay, into a Thought Cast. These are the cards we're looking for. And then another whiff. I think my game plan here is to get lucky and find a fling plus a tog. Cast them out all in one turn. Oh, I got punished for not playing my land out last turn. All right, well, there's a reason to play out my land. Chittering rats. In fact, the opponent's probably going to flicker on draw step. Oh, they didn't. Okay, to set me back. So note to self, play out the lands. But I was always saying... Uh, I want to draw a Tog and Fling. That's my out. Randomly one-shotting the opponent when they're tapped out. Gonna need to get lucky, though. <laughs> Nine lands here for us. Sitting pretty poor. Opponent has eight cards in their hand. Another Moldrifter. Yeah, and again. I already mentioned how low our winning percentage our likelihood was going to be but this flood is just solidifying it okay well the opponent has eight cards in hand so they're either thinking about what they want to discard or what they want to play carapace forger sure And again, that's something they don't even have to worry about. If the, if I'm the opponent, I don't even tap out for a counter spell on this. Um, the opponent has nothing in hand. Or tap out of a counter spell, rather. All right, just dead in three more turns to the flying beats. And we will scoop them up. A land on top of our library. Certainly not going to cut it. Flooded out pretty hard here with the affinity list. Only running 17 lands in the deck. Alright, so let's get these Pyroblasts in. Let's get this Relic of Pretendus in. And in this matchup, I don't like the Teamer Battle Rage. Just because they have so many ways to interact. I do like the Fling still, because you can get them randomly. Um, probably can cut some number of Prisms and Spring Leaf Drums as well. And ship it back like this for game two. Game two, Popper Affinity versus Blue Black Control will be on the play. And yeah, decent hand. Turn one Flare Husk, turn two Prism. It's not explosive, but it's definitely good and it has the potential. Like I could always just rip a, uh, say, a Frogmite off the top. Go turn one Flare Husk, turn two Land, Prism. Free Frogmite, and we're just in great business. Ooh, opponent's on a mulligan to four, though, so this game is going to be a lot easier for us to win. We can exhaust their resources uh, much quicker. All right, let's hope to draw a Frogmite. We did not, but the Prism helps us uh, filter lands. And I imagine if I cast Thought Cast, it gets countered, but maybe that's not so bad. We'll see if they have the counter spell for this. If not, then we're in great shape. I get to do lots of different things here. Spring Leaf Drum. Attack for one. Get to play Mirror Enforcer here for free. All right. They are going to counter that. And that's fine. That's what we wanted them to do. Because now we get to play a lovely Atog. And if they don't have a way to kill a Tog, yeah, then the game is just over. They were on a mulligan to four, so not very interactive there. Uh, we're going to keep the sideboard the same. And, uh, yeah, hope hopefully we can have another explosive draw like that. Again, one where we have an early creature that we don't mind sacrificing, like the Flare Husk, into some just solid threats. So, let's go to game three. Game three, and this time it is us who will have to mulligan. Opponent kept their seven. 
And we have a very fine six. A thought cast that I'm happily going to keep on top. We have a chromatic sphere to filter into blue. Go turn one flare husk, turn two chromatic sphere, frogmite, and thought cast. And everything is hunky dory. Ooh, another preordain. The opponent might be digging for lands, not have one yet. I imagine they find one off of this preordain if they didn't find one off the first. All right, Demir Aqueduct. And they're tapped out, so I can actually do everything without any worry for now. So let's go Seed of the Synod. Play the Chromatic Sphere. Play the Frogmite. Play the Thoughtcast. Yeah, not exactly what we wanted to draw. We'll sacrifice the Chromatic Sphere next turn to hopefully, hopefully dig us. So you get Oracle's annoying, but... We'll go ahead and just Galvanic Blast that. We want to save the Pyroblast for something a little bit scarier. That was a great draw. Let's go ahead and Thoughtcast. <laughs> Alright, again, not exactly what we were hoping to find, but here we are. Let's add a red here. A free Frogmite's not bad. Blast their Seagate Oracle. Attack in for three. And I'm actually just going to play out the other Flare Husk. I don't think we need to hold open the... Uh, Pyroblast just yet. Like, I, I don't have to worry about counter here, and they don't have enough mana to play Moldrifter. Just another Seagate Oracle. And honestly, I might just Pyroblast that. Like, it, Pyroblast the Seagate Oracle get in for six is pretty spicy. I can also move both of the Flare Husks onto each Frogmite so that I have two 3-3s three to attack with which is not a terrible line of play. But, hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure they run Evan Carr's Justice too, which is another reason why I'd like to move these Flare Husks over to the Frogmites. So maybe we do that here. This does leave me susceptible to Chainer's Addict, but I think I like doing this. This doesn't make me waste my Pyroblast and still lets me get in for six. The worst possible case would be like double chainers or double edict effect. But now any Galvanic Blast we draw is very spicy, just going towards the face. Seagate Oracle from the opponent. We just need a little bit more gas to go over the top of the opponent, because they have so much uh, card advantage on us right now. They have eight cards in their hand. All right, well, they're just passing here, which is a good sign. Carapace Forger, pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go into attacks. Okay, and they can't Ghostly Flicker either. They can't block block Ghostly Flicker. They might just jump here. Go to damage, please. Maybe Doom Blade. Oh, Ghastly. No, Disfigure. Okay, that's actually not that bad. They ate one of my Frog Mites, but we have lots of follow-up potential. And I'm still going to hold open the Pyroblast this time instead of double equipping. Oh, they're tapping very quickly. Moldrifter. We will counter. And now if we draw something next turn, we should be in good shape. Bam! Okay, that's not terrible. It's a cycle. It is a cycle, and we want to add... I guess it doesn't matter. We don't have white or black in the deck, and we already have access to all the other colors, so let's just tap a red, add a red. Tree of Tails. All right. We move the... Flare Husk over to the... I think Germ? Do I move it to the Germ or one of these other creatures? Pretty sure we just move it to the germ, because they can't double block the germ, otherwise they're dead to the seven. And either the frog might hitting them or the carapace forger hitting them 
means any galvanic blast that I draw is lethal. All right, so they're just going to bounce there, take three, chump. And that leaves us in a pretty good spot. We do want to play out the land, of course, because of the chittering rats we know about. This could just be another Muldrifter back up in hand. Indeed it is. All right. Okay, now they do have access to more removal. They do have Doomblade open and some other stuff, but... Again, it's not going to take much for us to win the game here. Send in the team. It's going to be real close. All right. Well, they might not have a removal spell here. Oh, wow. Perfect. Looks like they don't. They just double chumped and didn't use anything. And now we have four lethal threats sitting on the battlefield. All right. Disfigure follow, uh, finishes off our Carapace Forger that had just taken two damage. But the opponent's going to need some nice stabilization here. And again, I still have top decks that'll just win the game if they're able to survive the next attack. Six cards in their hand, though. What could they have? I imagine they have at least one Flicker. They could have a Chittering Rats. But I, they probably would have played it by now. I'm not actually quite sure. Okay, they're evoking Moldrifter. That's clearly a good sign. Unless they have the flicker to go with it. But even then, they they need to hit something. Okay, so they need to hit a dead weight or have another Disfigure or a Ghastly Demise. Which they do get a lot of looks at, so... Um, I can draw Fling. I can draw... Three of the... One of the three remaining Galvanic Blasts. But I do need to draw something. Alright. So if you didn't notice what happened, they evoked Moldrifter and then flickered it with the trigger on the stack. Doomblade, my Mirror Enforcer. And I draw a Prophetic Prism. Okay, that's a cycle. Into an, a land, damn. Um, so I attack with both creatures here. The germ trades with the mole drifter, Seagate Oracle, Chumps, Frogmite. And we have to hope. Because this is the point in the game where the opponent can very easily just catch up. Like one, one removal spell for this Frogmite, and we're in bad shape. All right, there it is. There's the Addict effect. And now I'm completely on the top deck, and they probably have some number of counters in hand. Just chilling. Looks like they used an Unearth on their Seagate Oracle. And that returns a creature with Crimson Mana cost three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Into a Chittering Rats. That's why we played our cards out. Holding five cards, three mana. Just got to play out every card. But it looks like the opponent's probably going to gonna win this one. Ooh, and a Radiant Fountain to gain some life. They can start rebuying the Radiant Fountains if they have any more of the... Uh... Whoops. If they have any more of the uh, Karoo lands. All right, looks like they're going to counter my Relic of Progenitus. Bajuka Bog. Irrelevant, our graveyard doesn't matter. I will take five. I will hope to stop drawing lands. But at this point in the game, again, it's very unlikely we can win. We need to get very lucky. Top deck a blast. The opponent taps out for some reason. And one point of life is the difference. 
GG's. That will be all she wrote. All right, so first round we lose versus the blue-black control deck. A matchup I think is not maybe favorable for us, um, but certainly one that we can win. So let's just try to win the next four. Round two with our popper affinity list. We are on the draw versus unknown, and we have a hand we can definitely keep. Turn one husk, turn two a tog. No, actually, turn one husk, turn two spring leaf drum a tog. We could even go. Colony Garden. That's probably the sign of Green Stompy, which is a deck that Affinity generally has a really good time with. All right, Mono Green. Again, it does appear to be. Ranker on their plant token. Get in there. <laughs> I'll take it. We want this germ for our spring leaf drum. Ooh, a frog mite even. All right, so that's a good turn for us. Get to go spring leaf drum, free frog mite. Get to play the atog off of the germ, which we don't want to attack with. And now really all we need to draw is a fling or um, team or battle rage for the win. And even if we don't draw those, the opponent can't really attack us very well. All right, I don't mind blocking their young wolf, and if they want to use a pump spell, it's fine. Otherwise, they get to undying it. Another blister pod. Carapace Forger, the draw for us. Let's try to find something spicy with this chromatic sphere. Add a green. And we'll just play a 4 4 out. Pass the turn. They're going to be forced to use tricks to get through my creatures. Um, because my creatures are generally just going to be bigger than them. Oh, they added black to the list. All right, so this is a different list than what I'm used to. The uh, popper stompy decks that I'm used to don't normally run black in them. There's a thought cast. That's pretty darn good. Let's draw two. Ooh, and there's the fling. All right, so I think we can actually win this turn. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. No, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I can kill them next turn with the Atog and Fling. Pretty nice synergy there. And versus green, black? I'm not actually sure what they can have to stop that. Another Ranker I don't care about. All right, take four. I'm at 12. Double black. One card left in their hand, so I'm not going to worry about it. I am just simply going to go for it. Uh, notably, this, you have to, so unlike chromatic, um, the other chromatic card, I can't remember it off, off the top of my head for some reason. Uh, this one you have to activate to draw the card, in, as opposed to when it just goes to the graveyard. But let's start sacking our creatures here. And go for the fling win. We'll start off with a galvanic blast too. Why not? Put some manas. Might as well. Make an <laughs> extremely large atog. And I'm already all in, so why not go the full distance? I would like to sacrifice my 21-22 Atog to fling you. And that's the game! So yeah, one of the easy ways to win with this deck, just make a huge Atog, sack it to fling, or make a huge Atog and team or battle rage. Uh, versus the Stompy list... So Relic can deal with the Undying creatures, although that's generally not too important. I don't really care for Journey to Nowhere. Honestly, I'm just going to bring in Armadillo Cloak. I think that's the only thing I really care about. Maybe Relic, but not even. And just take out one of these Spring Leaf Drums. Ship it back like this. Alright, game two. We're on the draw and a very keepable hand. That's the other Chromatic card. A star. Anyways, turn one spring leaf drum, turn two frog mite. Um, in addition to something else, actually. 
Brindle Shoal, when it dies, create a 3 3 green boar creature. Okay. Wow, Double Thought Cast was really good. So we get to go Chromatic Star here, free Frogmite, tap the Frogmite, and uh, play out. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Carapace Forger over a Tog first. See if they have a black removal spell that they want to use on that as opposed to our Atog. I'm happy to take one damage from them. Another Brindle Shoat. Oh, Shoat, not Shoal. Shoat. All right. So let's sack this for a blue. Play a Thought Cast out. And then let's tap that for a blue. Thought Cast again. I don't, again, I don't want to attack in just yet. I don't really have much reason to. The 4-4 can block any of their creatures very, very well. Okay. I'll be happy to block here. All right, they get two three threes. What else you got for me? Hunger of the Halpack. All right. Now they have a 6-6. Six, six. And I still don't care. Um, all right. Let's play a Prism first. Draw a card. Okay. Let's play another Prism. Draw a card. Let's tap the Frogmite. Play a Flare Husk, which is a good chumper. For one of their six sixes. Ah, they do have a ranker for the boar. Okay, that's going to be a little bit awkward, but again, I can just take the hit here and we can race them very easily. Darn it, they have another Brindo Shield. Well, I guess we now we need to dig into one of our fatties. Let's add a red here. Found another Atog. Okay. Let's play that out. Let's attack in with our 4 4 and our Atog. Okay, they're chump jumping. Play the Prism. And I can drum. What we want to drum with Frogmite Chromatic Sphere. I can just sack a ton of my artifacts to block the big boar. No problem. And we can chump the 3 3. Still don't know what they're playing black for. All right, prism down. Prism down. Prism down. And I can just pass priority here if I wanted to. I don't need this Atog, and I don't need to sacrifice another artifact. They get Ranker back to their hand, but we dealt with their biggest creature. Alright. Two cards left. Oh, another Hunger. Another 8-6. Last card is a Blister Pod. Alright. So now we're actually sitting in pretty good shape. We can sack this for a red. Find ourselves a irrelevant card, but we still have plenty of artifacts here. In fact, I can go ahead and attack with these two creatures, no problem. And they have to continuously block my Atogs, because I'm threatening so much damage with them. Alright. Block, block. And let's sack the Darksteel Citadel. Oh, I should have moved the Flare Husk with my last two mana. I guess I'll just sacrifice it now. And we'll pass priority. Uh, 
rank her back to their hand. Sure, we still have two four fours in that tog. And now we have a mirror enforcer as well. Let's just play them all out. And we will attack with them. Boom, boom, boom. So I have two, four, six, eight, nine artifacts, which means, again, a tog is a must block. All right, and we should just win here. Best invaders irrelevant. All right, I will happily double block to take no trample. Ranker's done some work, but I'm not really saving them in this position. Hey, there's a lovely thought cast. Let's draw two cards. Let's play a free frogmite and a chromatic star. Add a red, see what we draw. Play that spring leaf drum. They have to block two of my creatures, otherwise they are dead, and they just decide to take it. So we will move to one and one in the popper league. And let's queue up for a match three. Match three of this Popper League, we are on the draw, and we have a very acceptable hand. Turn one, Chromatic Star. Turn two, Frogmite Thoughtcast. Opponent leading on a forest is a good sign for us. Affinity has a, a good time playing against green decks generally. Ooh, now we're going to lead with the Springleaf Drum. Nettle Sentinel, so we're playing against Elves, or again, Green Stompy, but I would imagine we're playing against the Elf deck. All right, Nettle Sentinel into Birchthor Rangers and attack. So I think I actually want to kill the Birchthor because they're missing a land and this really enables them to go off. So we'll play the Star, we'll play the Free Frogmite. I can add blue here, Thought Cast. And then Galvanic Blast their Birchthor Ranger with my Frogmite. Oh, we have another one. That will untap their Nettle Sentinel. Not sure why they didn't play out this other Birchthor Ranger last turn. If they already had it. Well, looks like they'd rather hit me for two points of damage than continue to develop out their board, which I'm A-OK -okay with. Ah, they're not even attacking. All right. So what can we do here? Two, four, five, six... So I can play out both of these artifacts. Play out Mirror Enforcer off of the Frogmite. And then I can Thought Cast off of the Mirror Enforcer. Actually, I can pop this first to add another blue. Thought Cast. Play a land, another Spring Leaf Drum. And pass. And again, I could have killed their Birchlore Ranger again, but I think we're okay not doing so. Like, we have an Atog in hand, so I don't mind just trying to dig until one of our combo pieces. Alright, Elvish Vanguard. Elvish Vanguard, Birchlore Rangers, such a nice combo. We can just continue chaining off. Okay, gonna need to blast the Vanguard probably at this point, just to play it safe. First of all, Rangers already did its damage now that I left it on the battlefield. Oh, they got an island. I can't remember what they splash for, but I know that the blue decks do do something with that. Okay, um, I get to play. I get to play everything from my hand, so <laughs> seems good. Let's attack for six. Play a free mirror enforcer. Play a carapace forger. Oh, which actually pumps their dude because it's an elf, so I guess we'll blast it right now with the trigger on the stack. And then we can add a red, add a white, and play our atog. Pretty good turn for us.
So currently I have three four fours and a Tog, which, well, with three, six, nine artifacts is threatening to be a 19 power creature. And my opponent has a bunch of little green dorks. I think I'm favored here. Isn't affinity a fun mechanic? <laughs> uh. All right, what do you got? Another Birch Thor Ranger. Oh, you know what? I remember now what the blue is for. Distant Melody. Distant Melody lets them draw a card for each creature type of the chosen cho of the chosen uh, type that they own. And so with the Distant Melody, they can draw like 10 cards sometimes. Um, yeah, this is just a swing out with everything. Again, a Tog is a must block every turn, so just an Abyss. And they do have to block one of these creatures because this is 14 damage. All right, double chump it is. They took four, or rather they took 10 going to four. I'm pretty sure they can't deal 16 damage to me out of nowhere. Even with four already on the battlefield and split across three creatures. I'm kind of hoping they prove me wrong though. Okay, here we go. Elvish Vanguard doesn't do it. It's a start, though. And this is the matchup where Electricery from the sideboard is just brutal. Elvish Vanguard into... Into Scoop, all right. Again, I had four lethal creatures, so pretty hard for the opponent to, to do anything there. I could even bring in the Armadillo Cloak, but Electricries are probably good enough. Cloak is just fun. It does allow the Atog to trample through, though, which is another reason to bring it in, so I'll give it a shot. Take out a Prism, take out a Drum. I like both Fling and Battle Rage versus Affinity. Maybe take out a Frogmite. Ship it like that, and let's go to game two versus elves. Game two, Popper Affinity versus elves. This is match three. We are on the draw, and we have a pretty nice hand again. Turn one, Flare Husk. Turn two, Springleaf Drum Cop, uh, Carapace Forger. Could even Thought Cast if I wanted to. Uh, if I draw a Frogmite, this hand really goes off. Because then I can go Flare Husk, turn one, into Springleaf Drum, free Frogmite. Carapace Forger. Good stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's see what elves can do. Turn one Essence Warden. Alright, that will be annoying. Still gonna lead with the Flare Husk. This deck, the Affinity deck, is generally not concerned about a few extra life points. Ah, go. That's not good for them. Well, now we just get to start wombo comboing off. Looks like opponent... Again, they mulligan to six, so... They must have a lot of elvish vanguards in their hand or something. I get to draw four cards for two mana next turn? Seems pretty busted. Yeah, unfortunate for the opponent there. All right, so let's just start drawing two cards. And then another Forger. Let's draw another two cards. Let's see, I have five artifacts. I have six artifacts. Can now play this Mirror Enforcer for one. And attack for four. This game is basically over. The opponent's just way too far behind now. Sorry, elves. Not today, friends. Not today. 
attack him for nine. Um, let's see. Add a green here. Draw a card. Play a Carapace Forger. Play the Prophetic Prism. Draw a card. And then we can... Oops. Play the Chromatic Sphere off the Spring Leaf Drum. Gleeful Sabotage. That's not going to cut it, unfortunately, for the opponent. They are just going to be dead here. Conjunction of Battle Rage plus Galvanic Blast will finish them off. And that'll be it. All right, so easy game versus Elves, as Affinity generally does. Only the match we lost was versus the Blue-Black Control deck. Let's go to a fourth round, fourth match. Match for Popper Affinity. Won the die roll. We're going to play first. Ooh, and this hand is real stinky. Turn one, nothing. Turn two, Prophetic Prism. Turn three, ay ay ay. Turn, probably a turn three mirror enforcer. Hopefully, oh, I just I don't think this hand is keepable. We're gonna have to ship it down to six. Much better six. Holy moly! Turn one flare husk. Turn two four four. Turn three star draw two. Glad I went down to a better six here. This deck has just so much more explosive draws. Ooh, I'm actually tempted to keep the fling. It's a combo piece for uh, Mr. Atog, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it. We do have three card draws in our hand already. It's not going to take much for us to, to find Atog and just win the game on the spot. Rugged Highlands from the opponent. I'm not sure what plays Rugged Highlands, but uh, I'm just going to play my game here. Turn 1-1-1, one, 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 turn 2-4-4. Four, four. Seems good. <laughs> Rugged Highlands, so red-green something. Could they be three-color? Uh, maybe just red-green. What do they have? Mog War Marshal. Okay, so I guess they are an aggressive deck of sorts. A free Frogmite is never a bad Frogmite. Let's add a blue here. Draw a card. Draw two cards. Play another free Frogmite. Play a Chromatic Sphere. Yeah, might as well attack for four. They can just chump with the Mog more Warshall, but they might not, or they probably wouldn't have paid the uh, the Echo anyway, so no big deal. I already have seven artifacts on the battlefield. That means a Tog can get up to a 15 power creature if I hit it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's what I gotta say. Alright, what do you have? Nest Invader. Oh, it could be like red-green tokens, I guess? This doesn't seem too much of a bad matchup to me. A zero mana Mirror Enforcer. How about that? Um, I'm gonna sack this sphere and add a blue. And then we're going to move the Flare Husk over to the Forger. And attack for five. I don't want to attack with the Frog Mites. Not really. But with the Flare Husk on the Forger, it can attack into all of their creatures. And they can't uh, trade with it. And you know what? I should have attacked with the Frog Mites. What are they going to do? Just... Trade and double block and trade. That's actually not that bad for me to clear the way for my bigger creatures. I think that was probably a better play for me. Okay, they're going to bolt or something? Might of the masses. Okay. Um, Do I want to waste a fling here? I don't think so. 
I don't think so. We're going to let that happen. And then we'll move our Flare Husk to one of our Frogmites. Opponent still has five cards in hand, so... We're going to need to find some action here, but... We have some very large creatures and time. Alright, Gruel Turf, another Mog War Marshal. I imagine they just pass. Okay, Spring Leaf Drum. And I'm just going to pass. They have the War Marshal now. And I'm not in a rush. Oh, a Convoke? Maybe Scatter the Seeds? This must be Scatter the Seeds. Or a Sprout Swarm. It is Scatter the Seeds. Okay. Well, Electricry from the sideboard is going to be real nice. Oh, do they have another Scatter? Oh, oh, they do have the Sprout Swarm. Okay. So this game, we're going to have to draw a Tog. That's all it comes down to. We need to draw a Tog, because the opponent basically has infinite creatures. Wow, Might of the Masses is terrifying from their side of the board, isn't it? <laughs> so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So they can, they can, they can sprout the Swarm, or they can sprout Swarm three times a turn now. That's a great draw. Let's find some action. Okay, let's find a Tog? Double Galvanic Blast. Okay, that's also not bad. That is also not bad. Oh, they did have another Scatter. Holy moly. Alright, well, now I imagine the opponent is just going to full bash me the next two turns, because they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They have 15 creatures with power. Wow. That's brutal. Am I actually... I'm one short of killing the opponent if they bash with all of their creatures. I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 4, 8, 12. Oh, never mind. No, no, I have lethal. Um, yeah, we probably just need to hold on to these blasts in case they draw a double pump. The only thing we're doing is looking for a tog. If we draw a tog, we win. I don't know why they didn't cast Sprout Swarm end of turn last turn. I think they might have just messed up there. Thought cast, okay, let's add a blue, draw two. Okay, chromatic sphere. Add another blue, draw a card. Um, it's not a tog. It's another blocker though. Which is not relevant. They can basically just go for a one-shot kill. <laughs> I am 23 cards in my deck, and we haven't seen an Atog, though. But yeah, I think the opponent needs to start attacking with everything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 17, 18, 19. So the opponent's going to have 20 creatures with power next turn, if I'm counting the Sapperlings correctly. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. Like, it's not even beneficial for me to attack. It just, it's irrelevant. God, I would kill for an electricry here. They're still not attacking. Okay. Come on, Atog. Give it to me. That could be an Atog. You never know. That is not a tog. Oh, no. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. They can definitely just go for the kill next turn. 
Oh yeah, another scatter at the seeds. <laughs> this is pretty brutal. Hilariously brutal. That's the sick part, though. I'm almost halfway through my deck without seeing an Atog. And that card would just win on the spot. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Alright, they have 23, 26, 27, 28, 20, 29 creatures with power. Yeah, there they go. And I can kill 7? Not good enough. Alright, the opponent's going to take game 1 there. Where were you, stinky Atog? Where were you? Uh, we're going to bring in the double electricities. We're going to bring in the armadillo cloaks. And take out a prism, take out a mite, take out a drum. Probably just take out two prisms, I guess. And yeah, we'll ship it back for game two. Oh, I guess I cut too many cards. There we go. Game two versus red green tokens. We are on the play since we lost. And. Oh, this is so close. This is so close to a good hand, but I think we go down to six. Turn one chromatic star, turn two nothing if we don't draw a land. Plus, we don't have any of our sideboard cards in our hand. This is much more keepable, and we're definitely keeping the thought cast on top. I don't get to play the carapace forger on turn two. But I do get the prism, which is gonna let let me uh, let me cast all of my other spells. So next turn we get to go Carapace Forger into Thoughtcast. Young Wolf from the opponent gonna bash me for one. Colony Grove, get a token, and pass. All right, that's good for us. Ooh, and we even drew another land. How fortunate. Uh, in fact, I think I'm just going to go double Carapace Forger this turn. Seems good to me. Get our fatties online while they don't have any tokens to block, or at least not many creatures to block. Wow, they just Sprout Swarmed. They must have an extra one in their hand if they're doing that. All right, Nettle Sentinel, and pass. Okay, let's start off with the Thought Cast, as you normally do. Three, four, five, six, one mana, I'm your Enforcer. And bash in for eight. If they use a, a Might, at the, Might of the Masses here, I will save my creature. But they can also cast Scatter or Sprout Swarm with Buyback um, with the mana they currently have. Okay, this... They could just make it 2-2 two -two, or they could be pumping and making a 4-4 four -four, or 5-5, five -five, we'll see. Sure, they are going to go with the Might of the Masses. Ah, but they targeted the wrong creature. In fact, I can kill the Nettle Sentinel here. And then they only have three creatures to pump. Nice. That was a really good deal for us. That was a really good deal for us. Well, opponent just scooped. All right, well, go to a game three. Let's try to run that back. I approve. 
Game three versus the red green tokens. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this hand. It actually doesn't do anything, but I have an electricery. Um, and so I think we can go ahead and keep a slower hand. Two electricries now. All right, so our first play of the game is going to be turn two prophetic prism, which for this deck is very slow. But I guess the opponent kept a little bit of a slow hand as well. So not too upset about that. Ay ay ay, that's a lot of red cards. That is a lot of red cards. Hopefully they don't have an ancient grudge here. Ooh, gleeful sabotage my land. Alright, that's pretty bad for me too. Need to draw a land here. Drew a flare husk instead. Okay. Glad they didn't uh, have the mana or the creature to conspire that, because I would have been real punished. <sighs> okay, Nettle Sentinel. Please, no more artifact removal. If they have another Gleeful Sabotage. Oh, they do. That's so brutal. That's so brutal. They get to kill my land and my prism. Oh, wow. All right. We need to get lucky. We need to draw lands. Oh, they killed my Flare Husk, not my prism. Okay. So any land will be good here. Got up to just pass. And we'll discard one of our blasts. We'd rather have the electricries versus them. Good draw from the opponent. The old double gleeful sabotage. We're definitely not out of it. It's just I need to draw lands. But I only have 15 more lands in the deck at this point. Spider Silk Armor. All right, that's fine. And another pass here from us. Discarding the Electricaries at this point because of the Spider Silk Armors. Yeah, let me tell you, Sideboard Hate versus Affinity is real good. This could just be a scatter. Yep, scatter the seeds and then bash me for two. All right, so I probably need to draw a land next turn. Living Totem? I haven't seen that card in Popper decks before. Yeah, next turn is probably the bar for when I when I need to draw a land to survive. And yeah, that'll do it. All right. Well, we lost to the double gleeful sabotage draw. I think that matchup is generally pretty good, but I kept a two lander, didn't draw any more lands. Let's see if we can uh, pull off a 3-2 in this Popper League with Affinity. All right, the fifth and final match here with our Popper Affinity list. We are going to play first, and we are certainly going to keep this hand. Turn one, Flare Husk. Turn two, Springleaf Drum Thought Cast. Find ourselves in a tog, hopefully, to uh, go Team or Battle Raging on. Good stuff. Opponent's probably on burn if they're leading on the mountain. Rift Bolt entering the suspend. Solidifies that. Alright, so what we can do here is Springleaf Drum. Frogmite. Thought Cast. And we found the Atog. Alright. And it's unlikely the burn deck can kill me before I can play the Atog and jam in with it. So should just win with this team or battle rage here. All right, they are going to my face. So that is a good sign for me. Searing Blaze, my Frogmite. Sure, no big deal. 
Let's play the land. Let's play the flare husk. Let's play on a tog. Hit the opponent for two. And I will happily sacrifice artifacts to a tog if the opponent tries to aim some burn spells at it. Get him! Get him, germ token! This will be a lovely turn 4 kill with the Atog. We'll see what Burn can muster up. Uh, things we bring in. Hydroblast and the Armadillo Cloak. What you got, opponent? What you got? All right, Mountain in two. Curse of the Pierce Tart targeting me. That is A-OK, -okay, my friend. GG, nice to play. All right, play out this Chromatic Sphere. And let's go to combat. They needle drop me? Indeed they are. All right, well, I'm going to sacrifice this drum. They do have fire blasts in their deck, but a tog beats fire blast, so that's not a big deal. Sacrifice this ancient den. Are they just dead on board? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Wait, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. No. They're not dead on board, but with the team or battle rage, they are certainly dead. And the opponent's just going to scoop. Seems good. Cloak in. Hydro Blasts in. Um, two Prisms out. Actually, we need the Prisms now that we're bringing the Cloak. Frogmite out. Drum out. Yeah, one Flare Husk out. Let's just hope to draw the uh, Armadillo Cloak and get him good. All right, game two here versus Burn. We are on the draw, and we have a lovely hand because it has an Atog and a Teamer Battle Rage on it, or in it. Turn one Springleaf Drum. I might not even run out the uh, Atog on turn two, but we'll see. Depends. Oh, well, now I'm almost certainly going to run out the Atog. Bring Leaf Drum. Let's see what the opponent can muster up. No plays. All right. I'm actually going to go with the Prophetic Prism here into Frogmite. And play it a little bit cautiously. And then next turn, I'm going to play Double Atog. That way they have to use multiple resources and it gets awkward for them. Hopefully, hopefully I don't get punished. Because it's possible I die next turn because I'm playing it like this. Searing Blaze put me to 11. They have three cards left. Okay. Hydroblast, a very good draw. In fact, now I'm not even going to play out the other Atog. I think we just hold up Hydroblast. Let's do that. Let's just play a tog and pass. Bolt my face, resolves. I'd rather Hydro Blast another Searing Blaze or a Fire Blast if they have one. Alright, well they're just passing turn here, so I imagine we're in the clear. Good, good. Free artifacts are lovely. And let's go for the kill. Attack with the Atog. And let's go to Saxville. 
Sac prism, sac drum. Give the old teamer battle rage double strike. And now I just need to sacrifice two more of my lands and hold up the hydroblast, and that will be easy, baby, GG, bingo, bango, bongo. Casual 11 12 double striker. And boom! Just like that, that's how we win versus red. All right. GG's, well played overall. Fun little popper deck if you guys are interested in something like Affinity. I think versus the, um, the mon, or the rather the red green tokens deck, we got a little bit unlucky. I kept a two lander and we got double gleeful sabotaged. So, uh, there are a lot of good hate cards versus Affinity, but the deck does have some punch and does have some very explosive draws. Hopefully you enjoyed this. For everybody here at Numat Gaming, this is Kenji Numat the Nummy, Egashira, saying hopefully you enjoyed this look at a Popper Affinity League. Take it easy until next time.